Here come the most beautiful words in the English language. This is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast. It contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care. If you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers, there is no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. Pete, give me the honors. Nightmare Alley. Nightmare, Nightmare Alley. Alley. Boy, it's been forever since I've been able to, to do one of those things. Yeah. One of the, uh, give me the movie. This is the first one that we're doing of the brunch Oscar mini episodes. This week is Nightmare Alley and Coda. You'll have that with this little package. Neither of us had seen either of these movies. And Nightmare Alley was one I really knew like nothing about. Honestly, I didn't even know until the first scene that Bradley Cooper was in it. I had heard of Nightmare Alley as an idea. I don't recall ever seeing like a trailer. It kind of slipped under the radar for me. But as soon as it came up with like, oh, this is the Guillermo del Toro movie with Bradley Cooper. Mm -hmm. I remembered hearing about that in production. But I went in basically completely blind. So did I. So as you said, it's from Guillermo del Toro, whom we last saw cleaning up at the 2018 Oscars for Shape of Water. He won Best Director. The movie famously won Best Picture. There was some controversy there, and I didn't get the controversy. I was a Shape of Water guy. I thought that that perfectly was... Perfectly fine movie. Perfectly fine movie. Perfectly uh, Best Picture quality movie. Now, the other thing I had heard about this movie was that it was kind of a lame nominee for Best Picture, Ken Jack, I saw, tweeted, I would put this a few tiers below what I would consider a Best Picture nomination. And betting odds-wise, it has the farthest odds. Really? It is, That's it, it, stunning. So, like, it is agreed that this movie is nothing special. It does not crack 80 on Rotten Tomatoes as far as critic score, wow. which is a 79, or audience score, which was a 68. I didn't know that. Or I didn't remember the Ken Jack thing until after I saw it. Because I was like, how did people like this? And I was like, oh, right. When the nominations came out, part of the like LCP reaction was, how come no pig? Which is a correct reaction. Mm -hmm. And wow, kind of surprised that Nightmare Alley would get there. Maybe they're just kind of doing Guillermo del Toro a favor. Again, I hadn't thought about that until after I watched the movie. I just sat down, watched this movie, and... I think this movie's awesome. Yeah, I thought it was perfectly fine for the best picture category. Like, we're, we, we want to talk about the fact that, um, you know, it, it might be below, a, like, what is typically expected of a best picture. Every movie in the category this year is essentially below that, other than maybe Licorice Pizza, not to tip my hand yeah. a little bit. But, like, this, I thought... I didn't come away from it being like, how did this movie get nominated? Totally agree. I thought that we were going to end up like having a fight on this one because I, I I texted someone I really trust with movie stuff. And I was like, am I an idiot for thinking that like Nightmare Alley was really good? And they texted back like, no, it is really good. It's long. It's not perfect. I didn't think it was long. I didn't think it was long either. Yeah. I thought it was like it was... This is just going to be like a kind of lazy Bradley Cooper association. It's um, Place Beyond the Pines-ish in that no, it's that really like long. two movies. <laughs> yeah. But both of these movies are good. Yes. The second movie in Place Beyond the Pines, Very you're bad. like, mm, you know what? They, uh, they didn't need to make this second one without Gosling. But this is great story. Great performances. It is, in my mind, like, I, I, it's the easy association because it's uh, Guillermo del Toro, but, like, there is a lot of uh, Shape of Water qualities to this movie. Like, the set design, production mm -hmm. design is awesome. It is, uh, the cinematography is amazing, which is, like, sort of to, to be expected with del Toro, but, like, I don't know. Like, I thought it was presented really well. Uh, the story was interesting. Like, not over the top, like, amazing. But yeah. it was a, it was just, like, a kind of a cool thriller that looked awesome. Yeah, I mean, if you needed to... If you hit pause and guessed at multiple points in the movie what was going to happen next, you probably could have. So I could see a criticism of this being that it was, like, maybe a little, um, like, obvious something. But I wasn't really thinking that way as I was watching it. Like, a after having seen the movie, to lay out everything that occurred, each next step was kind of logical. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a, 
a twist at the end, I guess, where someone's revealed as a different quality of character than you thought they would be. But you're like, really? Also, we can spoil in this. Like the uh, Kate Blanchett, who I thought was awesome in this movie, is this kind of mysterious, uh, manipulative. Yes, definitely. So uh, Bradley Cooper is a carny. He's a mentalist. Mentalist, one of two things on which stonks are very down in this movie. The other being alcohol. It's like this guy is killing it until he takes a sip of alcohol <laughs> and then his I'll life falls you, apart. Things go south very quickly in this movie. Yeah. And like uh, it, there's, you know, there's murder. There's mm -hmm. uh, just a lot of booze. There's like things go very south very quickly. And it's all within like. Late in the third act. Right. So Kate Blanchett shows up while Bradley Cooper has turned his mentalist thing into a, a real grift. A r massive, massive grift. She shows up and she kind of enters his life and they get in business together of ripping off this guy. And the big twist is like it's like at the end of every heist in a movie where it's like, okay, we're going to split this five ways, four ways. <laughs> Yeah. Like, she turns on him, she shoots him, she takes the money for herself and uh, ascribes some, like, mental illness to him that he doesn't have. And I'm like, easy, Blanchett. We <laughs> don't... Problematic. Yeah, this might be 1941, but we're not doing stuff like this. But, yeah, paints mentalists in a bad light. A lot of deaths come because of this, this occupation. Mary Steenburgen... Kills herself and her husband. Yeah. Because he's like, yo, I can talk to your son. Your son's having a blast in heaven. He says he can't wait to see you. She's like, word. <laughs> and then she kills everybody. There's a big uh, there's a big uh, uh, stepbrother's parents reunion in this movie. Steenburgen and Richard Jenkins. Is Richard movie. Jenkins the dad? Richard Jenkins is the uh, is the like the scary guy who is bad to women. Who pays? Um, who pays Bradley Cooper's character a ton of money? Holy smokes! That's is that really? I believe you, Richard, but I have to look this up. That is Richard because I didn't even. Yeah, Richard Jenkins is that guy. Why yeah. didn't it? Was he wearing glasses or something? Yeah, he Did had he... glasses and a beard. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, those two famously, he was acting. That's right. He was pulling the old <laughs> um, Aaron Eckhart. He makes himself worse. That's, yeah, that's his version right. of of acting. But Bradley Cooper, Kate Blanchett. Rooney Mara, Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman is awesome. Ron Perlman's always good. I was like three minutes into this movie and they'd only shown me Bradley Cooper, Ron Perlman, and uh, Homeboy. I'm having a tough time with names today, apparently. Willem Dafoe. And I was like, yo, this cast is loaded. Yeah. And I didn't even know that heavy hitters were coming. That Steen Burgeon was in the mix. That Mara was coming. Kate Blanchett. Big year for Kate Blanchett. Yeah, she's in two Best Picture nominees. Good for her. Tony Collette, very good. Dude, I love Tony Collette so much. Always hits. Always hits. I um I think this movie did a good job though of just like building a bad guy because the movie starts with him burning down a house and le after burying a body and leaving something behind and it's like the 40s. So you don't know, it's like what happened? It's like is he a murderer or is there did something horrible happen to him? Did he, is he, did he save the day? Is he getting out of town? What's going on here? And as he meets uh, the mentalist at the carnival that he joins, he's like he doesn't seem like a bad guy yet. He doesn't no. seem like he wants to be a con man. He just is interested and he wants to learn. And then slowly but surely. He more like wants to make it. And the more uh, taste that he gets of success, like, he just wants more and more and more and more and more. And then, like, eventually it drives him to some really tough places. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, did you know what a geek was before any of that? I did not. No, I didn't. I was like, is that where geek comes from? Looked it up. Not really. Yeah. Geek just generally means like a freak. OK. But man, the scene with Willem Dafoe describing how they get the geeks. So they have a, a geek at the carnival, which is Basically, a guy they bill up, they're like, oh, he's got superpowers. He can go days without eating. And now let's give him a chicken and he'll eat the chicken alive. And they keep them, him in a cage, just like totally inhumane. 
And Willem Dafoe over steak and eggs explains to Bradley Cooper's character, Stan Carlisle, how they go about getting and like keeping a geek. And they're basically like, we just find an alcoholic and put, uh, is it opium? Yeah, something like that. They drug, they drug the alcoholic or the drug addict, yeah. the homeless person, and they like basically keep giving them a fix if they perform. Yeah, and the end of the movie after Bradley Cooper has killed people, has been left by his wife, has been attacked, has nowhere to turn, lost all his money, lost all of his money, is a big time boozer now. He stumbles into a carnival, and the, the, the Willem Dafoe explains to him, like, here's what you do. You find an alcoholic. You tell them, hey, we got a temporary job until we find a full-time guy for this. It's not a great job, but if you want it, you can try it out for a couple of days, and then we just, like, ruin their life, and that they do that forever until they die. And so Bradley Cooper knows all this. He goes to a carnival. is like, hey, I've fallen on hard times. I can do a mentalist act. I was killing it. It was making big money. And the guy's like, nah. He tells him to beat it, which uh, stonks up on beat it. All they do in that movie is tell people to beat it. And then he's like, wait, actually, you know what? Come sit down, have a drink. And you're like, oh, no. And Mm -hmm. he's like, look, I got a temporary gig. It's nothing special. Tells him word for word what Willem Dafoe says they do. And Bradley Cooper starts crying and is just so grateful to do it. He says, "Uh, I was born for this. Yeah. I thought – so that was, I thought, a little – a little too heavy handed yeah i could have used like a little subtlety to it yeah it was not subtle. no it was not subtle at all and and that that kind of left it not i don't want to say it left a bad taste in my mouth but i think i would have appreciated the ending more if it was like more up to interpretation yeah yeah Yeah. because you know all right that's the rest of his life then he's just gonna be that and what a waste everyone's telling him the whole movie how handsome he is Mm -hmm. and now well, he looked terrible at the end. There, he did too. not look good. He rock bottom, not hot for Bradley That's Cooper. Right. I think that Guillermo del Toro tried to balance out all the all the service Bradley Cooper did himself looks wise with the Star Is Born. Bradley uh, Guillermo del Toro was like, "Time to humble you, young man." That's right. Let's make you look terrible at the end of this movie. But for the forties, the fashion was good. Yeah, Rooney Mara looked great. Um, I thought the Blanchett movie just had, always looks great. Again, like it's Guillermo del Toro, so some of it's to be expected. But I thought the movie had like a good aesthetic vibe to it, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, like maybe there there is a little something to be want wanted in in the story. Um, and you know, it wasn't like you know, in a normal year, I might be like, okay, this is a low end best picture nom, but I have no problem with this being nominated this year. So again, it's the furthest odds betting wise. This is better than, as of this recording, I've seen, I think, seven of the ten yeah. nominees. This is better than at least two or three of the other movies I that agree. I've seen. So I have no problem with this uh, being nominated. There was a black and white version of this released for a limited time wow. recently, and I'm really mad that I, did, I, that I didn't go to that. Because if that were in theaters right now, I'd go tomorrow. I would love to see it in black and white. Yeah, I think that would be a that'd be a cool cool little twist. This, I mean, this does have, and I think that this Guillermo del Toro has done this with at least the last two movies. It has like an old, yeah, old style noir. Yeah, right. How many? How long is this movie? Because that is a frequent complaint. I would guess like two hours and twenty minutes, or two hours and fifteen minutes. Okay, Nightmare Alley runtime is two hours and 20 minutes. Okay. So, didn't feel long to me. And again, I mean, like, Licorice Pizza's two hours and 13 minutes. A lot of these movies are going, especially, like, Best Picture noms, they're going to go over two hours. Uh, are you surprised no nomination for Bradley Cooper for Best Actor? Um... I mean, I didn't. He didn't knock my socks off or anything. Yeah, I think people were talk. It seemed people were talking more about him as a best supporting actor candidate for Licorice Pizza than they were with which I didn't. This. I didn't get that either. Yeah, I, I think that th- there a line needs to be drawn with like minimum screen time. Right. But honestly, he was present enough in his scenes that I bet his screen time was actually higher in licorice pizza than we guessed but it's like he was in like two and a half scenes give me the uh the extended cut 
and then we can talk about uh, giving him the nom. What else is this movie nominated for? Best production design, mm-hmm. best cinematography, okay, and best costume design. I'm okay with all of those. I think that that's very, uh, very acceptable that all three of those are nominated. Yeah. Uh, no best director for Del Toro. Belfast, Drive My Car, Licorice Pizza, Power of the Dog, West Side Story. All of their directors were nominated over that. I think that I'm. I mean, I'm very pleasantly surprised that this is a. I I I feel comfortable calling this movie awesome, but then if you're like, so is it a great movie? I'm like, well, I don't know if it's a great yeah. movie. So like, you really get into splitting hairs. This is what I'm going to be doing mentally. I've already started doing it. Like for all the best pictures, I'm thinking of them in terms of the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, Schwarz. What a picture still <laughs> crazy about that still. Yeah. Like, would I slap that next to the name of this movie? What I, a picture. What a picture. I just barely wouldn't. Oh, I just wow. barely would not say what a picture. But if someone's like, hey, you see Nightmare Alley, what'd you think? I'd be like, awesome. Yeah. Not quite what a picture. I would say it's um, I would say it's very good. Very good. I would not say it's great, um, but uh, again, like the the bar is lower this year. On the odd chance that this somehow wins, how would you feel? I would think that it's um, a a very weak best picture. I would too, but also I'd be like, yeah, see, it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. One best picture. I mean, I would I would certainly take it. I, 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 Never mind. I I, I would say I'll certainly take it take over, it over some, a, a few others. Some more, let's say, heavily favored movies. But I mean, if you're watching, you should be watching all these movies anyway if you get the chance. But even as a non to a non Oscar person, I would recommend this movie. Yes, like if you're gonna just sit down on like a weekend, and be like, hey, you got a good movie for me to watch? You seen anything good recently? I would I would probably have this one in my pocket as like, hey, you should check this one out. It's a thriller, but uh, just don't have a drink while you watch it. That's Stonks right. down on booze. Or if you are having a drink, make sure it's not wood alcohol. Get the right bottle. 